When you look up at the night sky, you're peering back through time. The breathtaking beauty of the stars and celestial bodies make up the wonderful universe we are part of. And through its beauty are stories of great power and explosive events that have shaped our current view of the cosmos. In today's episode, we're going to explore one of these fascinating events. The birth of our moon. So sit back and relax, because this episode's going to be interesting. I'm your host, Mr. Earth Guy, and you're listening to Earth Sci Show. You see, the Earth and the Moon were formed by a violent collision between two ancient planets, one of which was called Thea. Thea was a Mars sized planet that orbited the Sun in the early solar system, about 4.5 billion years ago. One day, Thea smashed into the very young Earth creating a massive explosion that sent debris flying into space. Some of this debris coalesced into what we now know as the moon, and the remainder fell back to Earth and mixed with its mantle. But not all of Thea's material was lost or blended. Some of it sank to the bottom of Earth's mantle, where it formed two giant blobs of iron-rich material, each twice the size of the moon. These blobs are known as Large Low Velocity Provinces, or LLVPs because seismic waves travel slower through them than the surrounding mantle. They are located near the Earth's core, one beneath Africa and one beneath the Pacific Ocean. To understand these blobs in more detail, researchers conducted studies using supercomputers to model the different scenarios of Thea's impact and its aftermath. They found that the physics and chemistry of the collision could explain the formation of both the LLVPs and the Moon. They also found that the lower mantle was not completely melted by the impact which allowed Thea's material to stay intact as it settled to the base of the mantle. This discovery solves two long-standing mysteries in planetary science. First, it explains where Thea went after the collision. Previous theories suggested that Thea was either destroyed or scattered in the asteroid belt or in meteorites, but no trace of it was ever found. Now we know that most of Thea is still inside Earth, making up about 2% of its mass. Second, It explains why the moon is relatively rich in iron compared to the Earth. The iron in the moon came from Thea's core, which was partially exposed during the collision. The researchers also suggest that the presence of Thea's material deep within the Earth may have influenced our early evolution, such as the onset of plate tectonics, the formation of the first continents, and the origin of the oldest minerals. They plan to investigate these questions in future studies. This new study reveals the hidden history of our planet and our moon, And it shows how a cosmic catastrophe gave birth to two worlds. It also reminds us that the wonders and mysteries that lie beneath our feet are waiting to be uncovered by science. But how do we know that the giant impact hypothesis is true? How can we test this theory and find evidence for it? Well, one way is to look at the rocks that make up the Earth and the Moon. We can then compare their chemical compositions and isotopic ratios. Isotopes are different forms of the same element that have different number of neutrons in their nuclei. For example, oxygen has three stable isotopes, oxygen 16, 17, and 18. The ratio of these isotopes can vary depending on the source and history of the material. One of the most striking features of the Earth-Moon system is that they have almost identical isotopic ratios of oxygen and other elements. This means that they share a common origin and that they were not formed from different parts of the solar system. This is very unusual, because most other planets and moons have distinct isotopic signatures that reflect their different origins and histories. For example, Mars and Venus have very different oxygen isotope ratios than Earth, and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn have very different isotopic ratios than their parent planets. The similarity of Earth and the moon's isotopic ratios is one of the strongest pieces of evidence for the giant impact hypothesis. It suggests that the Earth and the Moon were formed from the same material, which was mixed and homogenized by the collision. However, this also poses a challenge for the hypothesis, because it requires a very specific type of impact that can produce such a mixing. If the impact was too oblique or too fast, the material would not mix enough, and the Earth and Moon would have different isotopic ratios. If the impact was too slow or too head-on, the material would mix too much and the Moon and Earth would have the same amount of iron content. 
To find out what kind of impact could produce the observed features of the Earth-Moon system, scientists use computer simulations that take into account the physics and the chemistry of the collision. They vary the parameters of the impact, such as size, speed, angle, and composition of the impactor, and see how they can affect the outcome. They also compare the results with the available data from the Earth and the Moon, such as their masses, size, shapes, spins, orbits, and magnetic fields. One of the most recent and comprehensive simulations was done by a team of researchers from the University of Arizona and the University of California. They used a state-of-the-art code that could model the impact in three dimensions with very high resolution. They also used the latest data from the lunar samples returned by the Apollo missions and the lunar orbiters. They found that the best fit for the data was an impact between the proto-Earth and a planet about the size of Mars, with a mass about 0.1 Earth masses. The impact occurred at a speed of about 4 km per second, and at an angle of around 45 degrees. The impactor hit the Earth near the equator, and its core was partially exposed during the collision. The impact created a disk of debris around the Earth which quickly coalesced into the Moon. The impact also tilted the Earth's axis by about 23 degrees, and gave it a spin rate of about 5 hours per day. The impactor's core merged with the Earth's core, while some of its mantle sank at the base of the mantle of the Earth, forming the LLVPs. The simulation also showed that the impact was a direct hit, meaning that the impactor and the Earth had the same isotopic ratios before the collision. This explains why the Earth and the Moon have identical isotopic ratios today, and why there is no trace of Thea in the solar system. The impactor was completely destroyed and absorbed by the Earth-Moon system. This simulation is one of the most realistic and detailed models of the giant impact hypothesis, and it supports the new study that proposes the existence of Thea's remnants in the Earth's mantle. It also provides a plausible scenario for how the Earth and the Moon acquired their unique characteristics, such as their iron content, their angular momentum, and their tilt. However, the simulation is not the final word on the matter. There are still some uncertainties and limitations in the model, such as the initial conditions of the impactor and the Earth, the effects of the atmosphere and the oceans, and the long-term evolution of the system. There are also some alternative hypotheses that challenge the giant impact hypothesis, such as the fission hypothesis, the capture hypothesis, and the co-formation hypothesis. All of these different scenarios propose different mechanisms for the formation of the moon, such as the splitting of the Earth, the gravitational capture of a wandering planet, or the simultaneous accretion of the Earth and the moon from the same disk of material. And the only way for us to test these hypotheses is to get more data and have more experiments. We need to analyze more lunar samples, especially from the far side of the moon, which has not been explored by humans. We need to send more probes and rovers to the moon to map out its surface and interior in more detail. We need to study meteorites and asteroids to learn more about the composition and history of the solar system, and we need to observe more exoplanets and exomoons to see how common and diverse they are in the galaxy. By doing these things, we can learn more about the hidden history of our planet and moon, and how they came to be the way they are. We can also learn more about ourselves and our place in the cosmos. We can appreciate the beauty and the mystery of the Earth-Moon system and the amazing story that it tells us. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share it with your friends. It really helps the channel grow. You've been listening to Earth SciShow, and I'm your host, Mr. Earth Guy. And remember, stay curious.